hands. Again, we have swapped sides. We'll see what that means here as the Fizz Bam comes out at the very beginning for G2 Esports. Yeah, Fizz is a, a champion you don't really want to give over early because it is a flex pick. It's so hard to kind of draft against it. And we have seen SKT take it in that first phase for either Huni or Faker. Little comma bans from SKT has become a fairly easy prediction. Yeah, I mean, especially the Fizz. I just want to reiterate your point there, especially against Huni and Faker. like. Extremely scary assassin players. Like you know, we've already seen Peanuts Lee Sin. He didn't actually even G2 didn't even actually even manage to kill him in the last game, and he's been undefeated on it for so incredibly long. Still on the board here as well, by the way, as far as the jungle pool goes. Also, when you ban the fish, you can actually early pick Syndra, which has been like one of the best picks for perks. It was banned last game by SKT, also banned against Flash Wolves by SKT when they were on blue side. It seems to be open for now. Don't have to first pick it, but then in the next rotation, you can grab it. It's interesting, because the Caitlyn ban also screamed to me, first pick Ash, but you're right about the Syndra being out there with, with Fizz being away. We'll see what you two go for with Zyra off the table. Let's see what's picked up. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how confident you are, right? Because Echo's still available. You know, the Assassins can still be played into the Syndra. I like this. Okay, so even though we've been pretty down on Trix Lee Sin, uh, it seems like a pretty good denial away from Peanut, and Trick has been more and more confident as the tournament has gone yes. on. So I'm definitely you know, curious to see what we'll get. I mean, it shows that new trust in Trick as a player. They're saying, you know what, yes, it's been a bad pick for you, but we need to take it away from Peanut. He's the best Lee Sim in the world right now, and we have to just give it to Trick and trust that he can actually play it. I like the counter answer in Time Kench for actually two reasons. One is obviously it's good against Lee Sin when it comes to him trying to find picks in the late game. And then two, if G2 wants to run that Syndra in this rotation, then the Time Kench is really effective there as well. Uh, SKT going for the complete you know, mental victory maybe here with the run back, taking uh, the opposite composition G2 ran last game with the Tom Kench and Ivern picked up to protect Bang. Yeah, this pick here from uh, Sven is, is also very smart because normally when SKT wants to play Twitch, they actually ban away the card more. But in this case, he is now picked early. So, you know, if it is a Twitch coming in from SKT with his late game scaling comp, at least then Sven has a lane matchup he likes. Exactly. Also then, you see the Tom Kench early, so you, then you get to prick your Braum into it, uh, and you do threaten those kills. It's be a fun one to watch for, of course. Though it's no Lucian, Kogma is a high attack speed champion. Pretty good at chewing through the Braum pass, getting that damage in. And SKT, looking what they want to go for, and Ash will be picked up here at the end. Suddenly, no Twitch. As we just talked about here, Twitch would have been great with this like protection for him in the late game. Almost impossible to then kill him. Ash is a pick that Bang, of course, has played a lot in the past, but he's actually valued Twitch and Caitlyn above Ash during this tournament. One is gone, and obviously the pick from Sven kind of blocks the other. Yeah, I mean, Ash is also still a bit vulnerable down there. If we do see Trick, try and go to that bottom lane. You know, what we did see in success for G2 versus Team WE was a tremendous amount of lane ganks through the side brush from Trick especially down around bottom lane, uh, as well as setting up four counter ganks for aggression. So we are in a ban phase two. SKT, of course, first to ban. Shen going away. Lucian still routinely being banned. They are <laughs> afraid of Faker or maybe even Huni playing the jam. He did say in an interview that <laughs> of uh, course. Lucian top was still viable. Or I'd bang. Love to see it. I love how Lucian's banned and nobody mentions AD carry position. Because anymore. Ash got picked already. Ash, Ash no mid lane <laughs> with teleport. <laughs> Fire the arrow from base. Yeah, we're not in 2009 anymore, Deficio. Back when you used to be good at League of Legends. <laughs> oh. That's a compliment. That's true. He used to be good at League of Legends. Not all of us. I'll take be. it. I'll take it. So final band coming through. Two disengaged tank bands really coming through from SKT. They could also take away the Galio and remove more tanks off that G2 pool if they're trying to protect Sven. Yeah, they have so many options now. You know, take the Galio, last pick for Faker, or you can even blind pick Orianna for Faker, and then last pick for Huni if you want to, you know, have a Fiora into maybe G2's Galio. And I actually really like the bands from SK Telecom. It looks to me like they're setting up Huni for a carry uh, style performance here. Banning out some of those tanks Ooh, uh, that's that, smart. to negate them. Yeah, exactly. So uh, G2 actually saw the exact same thing here, taking out the Fiora. Uh, one of those, but Huni has a vast array of uh, carry champions that he can play from the top side. And Rumble is also still available 
which would be a very good complement to the setup. But this also means now that Huni can just take the Galio blind, because the one counter pick you're kind of afraid of is now gone. But I think G2 is okay with this to not get trapped into feeling they have to maybe grab it and get counter picked by Fiora. Rumble can come in from expect, or you can just run Nautilus if you want to tank top. Nautilus is going to be okay, despite him being a weaker overall champion. They're absolutely viable, and even as we keep seeing tanks in this top lane role here for SKT, if you look at the last game, Bang did the most damage by a long shot, tripled the damage up with the Zven hat. We know that he can definitely Ooh. get enough damage to carry, and Gangplank! Into the top lane it is for Expect with a Syndra in the mid. I was going to say, Deficio, you know, Gangplank is one of the champions Expect loves so much, and he's so confident on that champion. You know, armor penetration into Galio, trying to farm up there, just use his ultimate uh, for the early stages. So Echo Orianna here would be two picks that makes a lot of sense. Orianna is the safe one, Echo is the counter one. This is a risky one that I know a lot of European mid laners Love to see when you already have Syndra, but I know also all the mid laners feel like Ari can win this matchup after level six. This is one of my favorite ones, right? Because it so much involves the sidestepping. The early sidesteps are so crucial in the trades with these two champions. So often I will see Syndra get the advantage because you get to start out uh, with the W and be able to set up the successive. Uh, damage, but you know, after the first recall, then I feel like Ari does bring a lot more threat. And once she gets to that level six, once she does have you no know, possibility of comboing, it's fun with also expects gangplank as you talked about here. We've seen it in the past. Mixed success overall. There have been games where he barely had an impact because he would fall a bit behind early, lose his tower. It would take a lot of time before he really did anything. And then other games where he had a good laning phase and his ulti was impactful for the bottom lane. He needs to have one of those really good games on this gangplank. He does, and Expect has one, been one of the great stories here at the tournament for G2 as well. You know, the team with a lot of confidence in him, and we heard his communication so decisive. Uh, they really are behind him, and they do trust him in the role. That's going to be his fifth gangplank game of the year here. Two and two on it, getting into the midseason invitational, and going to bring it back out now against SK Telecom T1. The trophy again on the line here. Best of five. We will not crown a champion yet with this game, but we know SKT can get within scratching distance and G2 Esports. If they want it, need them out to come back at some point, and why not as soon as game two here? Lineups on your screen, the champions over their heads. And we will see how this one pans out. SK Telecom T1 defending their title here at the Midseason Invitational. Very dominant in the knockout stage last year in here. We'll see if they can do the same as we head into game two, G2 in blue. Represented in the European LCS and SK Telecom T1 from Korea in red. All right, so once again, in the Lee Sin versus Ivern matchup, I want to see if G2 will try and play a bit more aggressive as far as the setup is concerned. They do have a Braum, very good at level ones, uh, you know, trying to push in for some of that vision to track Peanut. Yeah, and they also have to early push in mid to again, give it a little bit more assistance if Trick invades. Faker has been caught here before against G2. He's still sitting there. He's not spotting him. And now, oh, Q. Ron Q's gonna land so slow. They shouldn't flash for Otto's exhaust price a bit more time, and exhaust for flash is a worthy trade. So now, once again, that setup around the jungle is gonna be even better for G2, because now Faker has to be very careful if he wants to leave his lane against Elise Sin and Syndra early on with no flash on Ari. See if this game's gonna happen. We knew it worked out in game one, and right now we just have the battle lines. Huni kind of ensuring that no one does anything spacey on his side of the map, but he's already gotten a deep ward himself. To track what Trick Maybe wants to start at. Now, it Peanut has had very awkward Ivern games earlier this tournament. We'll <laughs> see if it's cleaned up here. I have to say, though, uh, you know, that even though you talk about, oh, yes, it was the exhaust in bottom lane, less value than the flash for mid lane. Uh, as far as the summoner trade goes, that's definitely true, but G2 never got the deep ward. And if you don't disrupt Ivern early as a team with the early invade to get the vision and at least even track him, uh, then it becomes a real guessing game for Trick, and he does have to worry uh, about Peanut actually playing it more offensively. You're right, though, typically so far, uh, if Peanut in his Ivern games has played much more defensive Ivern routes uh, for uh, his own clear on his own sides. Let's see what happens. Reversed matchup from the prior game in the jungle. Trick did get the better of it last game. We'll see if you can do that again. Looks for the mid lane right away. Ward hops in. Bit of damage and a faker, but there's no hard CC to be had. So it just burns the exhaust, but that's not bad. And this again is one of the changes we saw compared to G2 last week. Trick is much more active early on in trying to gank. Now this is obviously because Faker has no flash. Trick is like, I can take my red buff and I can just path through mid towards my blue side anyway and try and get an early first blood. But he's been 
so active in the early game. Boss the exhaust now. The Faker, no summoners in the mid lane. And Mina actually uh, just channeling both uh, the camps on both sides here, so he should be able to get off to a pretty good early start, and he should have an experienced lead and keep that lead over Trick due to the visit early on mid lane. The excitation. See if that can happen here down the bottom lane. Quick push lead here for SK Telecom T1. Not matched exactly perfectly, but a nice key into the damage output. One more shuttle stun wolf. Good chunk there. But down exhaust for the next minute means Mithy cannot really opt into any all ins. Pretty equal CS, pretty alright right now. Yeah, and some some counter picks from G2 in this game here, without it being like you know hard counters that would just destroy the laning phase. Braum against Tom Kent is simply because Braum in the late game is such a powerful champion and he gets kind of free laning phase. Top lane. Gonna be a bit of a rough road for Expect right now. Forced to run away, it takes a little bit of damage, flashes the wall, and he's got some time to go with the Leeson's coming right behind him. Can they make a gank happen out of it? Should be outside of ward range. Trying to bait right now. This is the cube. They're gonna go in now for the Ivern. Look at the damage output. Expect down to 100 HP. Knock a block by Trick, and he's gonna stay alive so far. Peanut down to 200 HP. Puts the shield back on. Expect one head away from deck. Gets the shield in again. Trick back in. Oh! One more kill will do it. First blood in for G2 yet again. Trick continues to be the miracle worker. As Huni is out of mana, nothing else to do over there. Risky 2v2 fight, but now in the bottom lane. It's an early heal forced out of bang on this one. Zen takes the exhaust, and that's a two summoner burn off that all in. Mithy gonna be okay, and the passive fell off, so Sven couldn't stun up Bang. That could have been a very bad trade for G2. Sven kept the heal here. Mithy kept the exhaust. Mid lane Faker without those summoners. He's struggling at the moment. He's fine though, but uh, he's not getting any CS. But this is such a crucially different early game where it's actually all the side lanes winning, not just in the mid lane. But now there's there's not that extra lane pressure of the impending turret falling for G2. Yeah, that 2v2 skirmish was so huge for Expect and Trick, the duo lane that stepped up coming into the semifinal. Exactly, this is Ivern Galio. You know, it's a tank and a supportive jungler. Bye, Never baby. mind! Ooh, they force it, now they're summoning around, so the only thing left is Bang's flash. The rest are down. Uh, gank forcing a summon doesn't always mean a lot. The intrinsic value is not quite there, but Trick gets another gank off to some degree of success. Yeah, second game now with a very active Trick where G2 are getting early advantages, like Faker is once again just getting targeted. Perks has plans, used it straight away, but level three Faker at the moment, he will get level four from this wave. And expect he can chase this one down. He's only a couple of hundred HP away from getting his kill. Gotta watch out for the brush damage. One more Q, one more auto kills him. The auto attack not gonna be oh. enough for Huni. And expect finds himself a solo kill. That was dang close with the extra damage from the minions, but expect confidence. He loves the gameplay and the team trusts him. And yet again, Minty in the front lines. They're gonna stun up. Well, plenty of damage here to be had. Armor shredded off as well, down to 300 HP. Make that 200 the flash, but the W turned off. No fire arcane barrage to be had. The flash follow. The kill on the wolf should be there. Now, how about the counter attack? The gank is in for Peanut. One point oh, of attack. Are low. He's been slowed. He was already stunned. And that's gonna be the double kill in for Sven. Everything they need. Single lane winning right now for G2 Esports. Bottom lane with aggressive plays. Trick with the one we won. And mid lane, it's just a CS advantage, but it's still good enough. And this is actually more worrisome than, for SKT than the previous game. Uh, G2 have quite a bit of scaling on their side. And Trick with full confidence on this Lee Sin now. Let's see if they can actually do what they did not do last game, which is snowball transition with their vision into SKT's jungle so that they can actually counteract the moves SKT set up. And to remember last game, it was hard for G2. Hello, Oh, Faker solo kill in the mid lane. The XP advantage pays off. Trick's out of range for the exhaust, and the ult jumps him down. Shows the EULC has a logo as well from Perks here. Feeling confident. Two games in a row, he's getting early kills. And you talk about dominant game two. Faker versus Maple in the Caspia LeBlanc was a farm lead. Perks has now killed his opponent with this one. It's a more dominant game two than Faker had in the Cassiopeia. Absolutely blasting Faker here. Another game. And let's take a look at how he set that up. Still had the spear on the ground, and Faker gets hit with the stun. It's a two level advantage at the time that he goes for it. Flash goal is everything. Not using flash on the Q from. Uh... Perks, and then he goes down. Maybe actually wasn't available just when it happened. Well, he definitely denied a tremendous amount of CS with that kill as well. That was a double stack minion wave. Last definitely would have been up. Q's gonna land. Can he find the play? Not gonna come in for this one because Peanut was there to backfill the lane. Faker still without an ultimate just yet. 
Trying to force another flash right there from him. He's under pressure in this mid lane. Perks, you see the numbers on your screen right now. Number one in so many things. Legend, ranking among these mid laners. Legend in the making here. Perks in the mid lane. Kicks Faker out of his kingdom and then kills a minute. Starts level one. Faker standing there in the brush. Done it multiple times this tournament, a bit punished for it. Loses flash, then exhaust goes down to a level two gank from Trick. And then Perks gets level six earlier and forces that kill. Faker, the unkillable Demon King. Apparently it's a battle of different countries at this point. As Perks is the kingdom of his mid lane on this one. And so far, so good for G2 Esports. A better looking early game than the first one. And as I tried to say before, Perks interrupted me so rudely by solo killing Faker. <laughs> G2 has much better late game now compared to last game, where it was very hard for them to execute fights with the Jace. Like, you have fantastic scaling on Sven and Expect in a game like this. And this actually turns into Drake control as well. The fact that Mithy has set up so many of these plays in the bot lane means those solo Drake steals from Peanut are not available this time around. The key that we are looking for, they failed last time to snowball off the early kills with the vision around Dragon. Uh, Huni actually might be walking down for a lot of pings in mid lane. Looking for it on a purse. Good exhaust to block some of the damage. No stun to be had as well. Faker walked the right way for it. A knock back to buy a bit more time. And Trick going to keep his mid laner safe. Perks down the cleanse. The flash Q doesn't do what? anything. Huni, I don't know what that was. Is NALCS days showing? Maybe that was a misplay. That was definitely a misplay from Huni. I like to disengage from G2 instantly. Faker has to use both exhaust and ulti. Cleanse down here from Perks. And that's again the center without flash. So. Good call from SKT to try and make a play around him, but the execution lacked right there. They lost the flash now. And it may be that poise is starting to crack a little bit here for SKT, as we've seen a decent amount of errors from their members. Last game, it, it did not amount to much because all the rest of the members of SKT were able to step up in Faker's place as he was heavily camped early. But now, who is going to step up for SKT to regain control of this game? It needs to be just the, the mid-game shot calling for them as a team, like we saw in the last one where they were able to find some of these openings against G2 despite being down cold. And they do have somewhat of a comp for it. Hard CC exists on every champion on this lineup for SKT. We've seen what they can do with a single Ash arrow before. They certainly can do it again here. A lot more damage and a lot more defense is actually even from G2 with the Braum. As you said, Deficio brings a tremendous amount to those team fights. Even though G2 don't have that frontline tank to match up toe-to-toe yep. -to -toe with Galio, Unbreakable can go a very long way to stifling SK SKT's composition. That's the lovely thing about Braum. If he was better in the laning phase, almost every support would just want to play him all the time because his team fighting is so powerful. But you can't just you can't blind pick him against all the range support. So whenever you see Tom Kench logged in, you see you see the answer. It's just Braum. People just go, yeah, give me Braum straight away. I can survive the laning phase here. I can get into these team fights where I can start shining on this champion. So the support they love this matchup here, even though you don't necessarily bully the lane. And you mentioned landing phase. A sub 10 minute ocean drake is the best possible laning drake in the game. You practically can't run out of resources anymore. You can see Faker with his worst MSI laning performance so far. No surprises based on how well Trick and Perks have played this lane. Trick himself now looking for the play on the bot side of the map. Summoners are available for SKT, but Mithy definitely wants it on this one. Arrow's gonna land on Trick. Q's still going to land. Goes to the follow. Can't do it now with Wolves eating him up. TP gonna come in. TP gonna be stopped. And a partial cooldown burn for Huni. And some important restraint show there from G2. Able to draw out the teleport cooldown without committing any of the ultimates. They still can repay to play. The Gangplank ultimate is still available for Expect. So he can continue farming on the top side and then even have a bigger impact than Huni on a repeat play towards the bottom. Faker's on the way top right now. Expect took a, a bad trade just before. Gangplank is extremely squishy early on and defensive ult here from Expect to just kill the wave. Trying to just hold his tower. And credit to Huni for how well he has played this laning phase. He's roamed up his lane more than once now. Uh, partial TP, but he's actually been able to bully Expect. Expect got the counter pick. Yes, we know Gangplank scales, but it is still credit to Huni for winning this one-on-one. Aside -on -one. for that solo kill, everything's going great for him. <laughs> and, and that almost gives more credit to him where we know Expect is up gold and Huni is still controlling the lane. Hicks. Still two levels up, by the way, in this mid lane. Absolutely crushing it. And this has been Perks' tournament the entire time here. Huge performances from this young player.
definitely been the biggest winner during this tournament. Kind of redeeming himself as well after Worlds where he didn't play too well. And then Eros, yes, he's been the most consistent player going into this tournament. And once again, consistency has just been key. Such a high level in every single game. It's, it's very impressive. You can see now the rest of G2 starting to get pressure as well. The whole team seems to be stepping up and playing to that top level. There's always the possibility of these upsets. If these people play their best tournament, if they play their best day, they can be good enough to dethrone the kings of SK Telecom T1. It's going to require continued excellence. G2 may be on the road, though. And no mistakes when you have the advantage. Your shot quality needs to just be spot on. Because you will get challenged even 5 and 10k gold ahead. And in order to do that, preparation is key. The Drake is coming up in a minute. Well, mid lane, though. Go for Exhaust. Here comes Hooney's well charmed by a little bit of time, but not a ton. Hooney the front line is looking for the taunt now on the trick. Decent damage onto the jungle, and G2 going to back off. Help from both the sides. and. Disengage the mid lane. We're gonna keep seeing these kind of fights, you know, where Faker dashes into the face of someone who when he comes in with ulti. Oh, slow on a peanut though. Does have flash, can get away if he needs to, and will do so. Jumps to the wall. Daisy comes in to join the fray. And we'll see there will be a disengage. Perks now gets to enjoy the benefits of an ocean Drake, regenning his health and mana as Bang wants the arrow in the mid lane. Can he find the target? Looks for Perks. Not even gonna be close, not yet, but Wolf's coming in, and the tongue lash is gonna land. Cleanse. Not, of course, available. Gonna flash the charm, stay away. Gonna force the recall here though. SKT should use that opportunity for preparation, as we said, around the Drake fight. Moving in, they're clearing out vision, double control wards immediately go down, and Wolf gets a little bit of vision onto the ramp. As we know, SKT happy to fight you with that 3,000 gold deficit. They've made it work before. The question is when will they choose to go for the plate? Trinity Force now done on Gangplank. Gives an important power spike. A little bit of damage on a Hooney, but you can see how nearly impervious the damage he is. Let's fight that. The goal for expect is definitely not to solo kill Huni again. It's more just to keep <laughs> farming, 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 and not lose that tower. That's why we saw the defensive ulti from him earlier. It's up again in case there's a fight near this dragon. Huni's TP is also available, so there might be that big 5 on 5 team fight. Yep. Gangplank cannot stop teleports, but at least Huni's ultimate is down. More trades in for Perks in the mid lane, clearing the waves, and we'll see the Drake is alive. We'll see who makes the play. Yep, and Trick has already stuck his way in there. Learned a thing or two from Peanut from last game, and we're looking to take down the second one. Should have enough time. Wolf coming over, but there's not going to be a chance to get it away. And Trick actually did it without Smite the whole time, and thankfully knew his teammates had the pressure to make it work. So double Drake, early pickups, and these are stacking very, very quickly. If G2 keeps the map pressure, they're going to get four to five Drake buffs this game. Yeah, next one, Infernal. Very good for them. Getting a bit of everything here in the early game. Need to keep that control in mid so Drake can actually apply pressure. He's near the bottom lane. It is hard to gank the Tom Kench lane unless you go for the Tom Kench himself. That is not enough. Thanks, sense danger. The ward probably was part of the reason for that one. Ruin King device some distance away from Mithy. But still damage on this bot lane outer turret. Down to half right there. Stun and turret range. Mithy's got to jump away. Early redemption popped and not going to be any damage. Mithy getting away with this one. Have to be careful here when looking for first turret gold. That is a very big objective, and it's definitely possible. They've done it before where you use first turret gold, the low turret, as bait to try and drive the enemy team to overdive. When teleports are ready, communication is key here. Both Huni and Expect have ultimates as well as teleports to be able to affect this bottom side of the map. And I think what you look for is Perks' movements. Can he get away from this one? Jukes the charm. Ults in for plenty of damage, and a finger nearly takes him out, but the rest of the team is joined the fray. And Perks running out of health on this one. All the damage they need is Peanut and Wolf slowly chasing down. Wolf gets the kill the second of the game now for SKT. SKT strike back, targeting Perks, but what else can they pry over? with that. The Infernal Strike is a long ways away. Bottom lane's pretty pushed up here, actually. Remember Hooney uh -huh. still with TP. And expect Scott, the ultimate already burned to actually use that in the prior fight, but look at this with Hooney out of the lane. He ulted in. Expect to go for turret damage. She can't get enough yet. And after all the gang's mid lane, you know, Clint down, flash down from perks as well. It was just a matter of time before they could return and make a play. You got Galio ulti, Tom Kent's ulti, dashes from Ari. Like, there's so many ways to get on to perks. 
and they get the kill, but he actually forced Vega back to base, which meant they could keep pushing in these side lanes. Exactly, they took away a lot of the threat. With all those things you mentioned they used in the mid lane, uh, expect is the next target, though. Here comes Iron to join the fray as well. Running out of HP quick, Oranges to pick up to buy a bit more time. The turret will go down to the bot lane. One more shot will do it, and he can't get the attack through. One more hit for Hoon, he gets the kill picked up, and Revenge is his in the top lane. Daisy, the MVP with the knockup here, keeping Huni alive. Svendo got that bot lane tower. And still, this top lane tower as well is extremely low. You can see on your minimap, oh, it's almost down to 10%. Top tower will not fall. And there's still a lot of pressure in the lane from Tito Perks. You get this TP used to get away, and looks like Huni learned from his time in the European LCS, pulls the SOAS special, and <laughs> gets the TP out to stay alive. All right, TP down then. Some teams would actually argue that is worth more than just getting the kill if you can actually get TP on a full cooldown. So it's not a bad roll from Perks. Yeah, Expect actually had a uh, flash during this as well, but did not want to try to waste it to try and get out of this, allowing them to pick up the kill, saving the summoner spell. Yeah. It's a tight call. You can flash the Daisy knockup, and it'll still go on air quotes cooldown. They won't get the rehit, so. Didn't choose to go for it, chose to take the death. And as Perks went to the top lane, he did get that turret yeah. finalized. Still all the local gold sat for expect, but that is two turrets to zero for G2 here in this one. Yeah, again, now turret gold, mid lane tower is 50%. If they can get that one down as well without losing a tower, then it's a massive gold advantage for them. They're already 6k up. It should be enough to take control of the map with vision and just st strike. <laughs> exactly, a lot of ah, the gold strike. <laughs> <laughs> the Pichiel trying to... Uh, okay, never mind. We won't. That's not for air. Anyways, we have to mention a lot of the gold too. With expect coming from this game playing passive, coming from the the pole popping, he specifically 1500 gold up over Huni as well on this carry champion in the game playing. You know, he's scaling very well into this mid game, and it gets very scary here as far as the damage output that G put, uh, G2 can provide. It's leads absolutely everywhere for G2. Expect does get knocked up by Huni, but you can see these trades get a lot better with the Hex Ring from Merc Trent's done. He's able to withstand so much of this damage now, but there is no member of SKT with more money than their opposition on the map. We got two full items now for Sven as well, so if there is a fight, then he's actually already very strong. They're going now for Expect. Gonna land a lot of damage onto the gameplay. Gold the in for the Galio as well. He's gonna flash to buy a bit more time and looks like saving it was the right choice back then. Wolf with the flash into the exhaust. The slows are there. One more hit will get the chop and Expect not long for the world. Kill goes through the Faker. Yeah, but Dito has to get something else. A bang oh, oh, the thing screwed it up. Bang Ow. survives the tower dive. Trick wanted him and can't get it. There is still some turret pressure, but that is huge for SKT. A bit greedy there. Uh, G2 on the opposite side. They still will get a mid lane turret trade. So at least they are able to get one outer for the other one. But another death given over. You have to be so worried. They said no mistakes versus SKT. Yep, that's the kind of play you have to execute. There were three guys from SKT trying to kill Expect on top side. And then suddenly Expect gets a kill. Oh, sorry, Bang gets a kill on the bottom side. So arrow on Trick while he's on the tower and he can't kick Bang back towards good Sven then. Very good flash and then I guess he just stays alive with the heal. Yep. It's so close. That heal and a great arrow from Bang early on. Yeah, pretty much mechanically perfect right there. Of course the turret redemption help, but here comes the play. Bang cannot outplay that one. Hedrick buys some time and Perk looks for one more spell. Oh, not gonna land this one. Now Wolf is here. He just did. He did. He did. The Hex Drinker was the right choice. He survives the one-on-one -on -one against Perks. Perks scared of reinforcements because once again the deep vision for G2 doesn't afford them any counter. But it's a health lead and an Ocean Drake for the region with the Infernal Drake spawning in three seconds. Bang. Not gonna have an easy time being part of this fight. Able to heal up a bit though. And Looks like he will be part of this one for now. Huni now in the fray does have flash. He's also got really a lot of tank stats there. And Minty down a half HP, maybe bit off more than he can shoot. If the rest of the team can re-engage. He looks for it, doesn't find it as yet. And here comes the ulti, looking for the dive, looking for the flank, looking for damage on a perks and Faker. Looking to take him out. One more shot, the flash, the auto. It should be a trade kill, but Trick is dead meanwhile. And Minty running away. Faker survives the tower dive. Will there be a re-engage? Bang a bit low at half HP, but only three alive versus five of SKT. Means they're gonna keep going for this. SKT should stop chasing. They should take the infernal Drake prize.
is incredibly valuable, but they're gonna press in on the turret. They want more kills. 4v3 for the kills. Then of course to run Daisy's letting him out for now. Mythic gonna buy some time in this one. The respawn's coming in soon. Trick in 10 seconds. Mooney wants the front line, can't quite get it there. One hit away for Daisy falling. Here's the gangplank. Only as expect joins the fray. Zen cutting back nicely enough. Mooney healed back up with redemption. Expect now under the turret. One attack in for Bang. Minion wave now to take the aggro. Nice explosive cast. Oh, Bang is tanking. Oh, oh, oh. Bang, is Bang is taking the slows are there. The shield. Mythy saving the team for now. And Hooney should be next up, but he's able to buy a bit more time. Two more shots will do it. Kill goes through to Zen. Will there be a chase? And what is going on? When have you seen SK Telecom continue a dive rather than taking an infernal drink that is theirs? Well, Vegas on his way down with ulti in case Jeezy pushes up. Sven is very far forward. Vegas, he's spotted by Trick. Jump in for Trick. Doesn't have Flash. Has the Q. The look at the oh. kickback. And he's ready to face the Hello. Hello. Absolutely beautiful from Trick. And the Trick goes to G2. I was about to say this game won all over again, but now more fighting. Yeah, Wolf's gonna be fast enough to get away. Stun's not gonna land either, so it will be the break in the action, but a 4,000 gold lead and a three Drake lead for G2. It almost looked like game one again, where G2 in the mid game, where they lose one of these scrappy fights, and suddenly Drake will be gone and towers, but then SKT overdive it. So much greed there, and G2 outplay under the turrets defensively. Expect landing key slows, Bang gets turret aggro, and they're able to live, not only live, but get the return kill there on to Hooney and the Infernal Drake Prize. We'll see if G2 can keep up the pressure. At 20 minutes, it was a lot closer than the previous one. G2's actually been able to hold on to Drake control this time, and we will see. Yeah, just the fact that G2 actually managed to bounce back right now and get kills and Infernal Drake is so huge for them. Because they were probably getting the flashbacks as well, like, oh no, we made a wrong call. It's all falling apart. But then with the kills, 4K goal lead in Fernand Drake, that's huge for them. It's Baron you're looking at now as the next potential setup to force a fight. A lot of flashes down outside of SKT there. A lot of targets you can go for. There's still some wards though, and especially that one in the brush makes it very hard to sweep. Mithy hoping to look for it. I think he might have spotted it with a sweeper. He wants that bot lane dive again first. Really well played by Expect here, staying alive for such a long time. Mithy comes in with the block as well. Exactly, the Braum denying so much of that damage, and Moody gets Killed on the way out there by Sven. More money over to the cog by then. Trick knows that there are no summoners on Faker after he just killed Perks. Goes in, takes advantage. We head back to the mid lane. It was just the teams fighting over vision control a little bit right now. And as I check the toggles, G2 have a couple of words in the inventory and a couple of words in the jungle, but SKT have the division themselves around this Baron pit. Quick blue goes back over to Faker, who has done an amazing job of coming back in a game where he gets solo killed when he's down two levels, and he's still actually a force in this game. Much like the last game, where he was one of the guys diving into the back line of G2, despite being down 0-4 early on. SKT here are killing this one ward. They are actually spotted by G2. Then on the wolf, can they get the follow through is the question. Knockup's gonna come through thanks to Mithy, but they will not chase through the jungle. G2 still a bit reserved, but that is two ultis down. Yeah, and a very critical flash. Flash on Tom Kench is like a saving grace for other members on the team as well. I really do, you know, prize that summoner fairly highly. SKT trying to get back some defensive vision around the Baron though. You know, G2 have the upper hand in that area. Yeah, but now because G2 had the opening and used it, you know, to try and get a flash and maybe a kill. They have to then step away and actually allow SKT back into that river to kill the wards. Like professional teams who always kind of trade. Okay, now it's my turn to make a play. Okay, I didn't succeed, so now it's your turn. It's very rare you just constantly have the control. And then you basically already won the game. So SKT now got their chance after they forced some ultis out of G2. They bought a bit of time with the vision, but G2 can go right back in and set up their control wards. And the crowd is deafening in here as they see a team with the lead over SKT past 25 minutes. Will G2 be able to close in past secondary turrets, though? Trying to fight that vision war. As you said, Vicio, there is a bit of ebb and flow. And it's now G2's turn to move in, but Perks almost gets killed by Faker. Narrowly survives the one-on-one -on -one in a lane. He was smashing. Faker certainly doing well in what... Arrow can be clipped in the counter. Fix Sven Stein. He's got to get the rest of the team to buy some time, and they have done so. Trick going to lose life for the cause, but gets away with the ward, huh? G2 staying alive. SKT on the chase. Trick with the body block there, able to save Sven by taking that and escape. Remember, huge chunks of health were taken out, though, and SK Telecom now should be able to get those, you know, vision coverage back. 
and it's the crazy thing. Despite SKT being down all game long, you still feel like they're somewhat in control and able to like force plays like this. Because they look for these small openings where you make a small mistake in your position and then they engage onto you. Trick here saves his AD carry, or at least tries to save his AD carry. Charm. Takes the charm for him. Another fight now. And there's Wolf CC'd up a little bit. Knock him is there. This time they can pick him back and they bring Faker with them. They've got the front line of kite to fight to see what they can kill. Wolf is down. Faker pushed the run away. He's alive so far. Ulti used to dash away. Two man knock up. Trick is low. Bang on the wings though. Here comes the shield. One kill, two kill. Make it three, but it's oh, right back for Bang. Expect one back and he gets him a double kill for the gameplay. Now the chase on Ahuni. Can he pick him off? Revenge for leaving the European LCS. He's running away to stay alive. One more shot, two more will do it. And that's the kill picked up for Sven. A huge team fight for G2. Four members down, and G2 can take the Baron up here to actually get some objectives. Now they're going to rotate over. Expect coming in, and they've got a lot of time. Four versus one, but Smite is available. Peanut can Q, jump over the wall, and land the Smite afterwards. Can they zone him out? Well, Perk should just stay on this side here so he can actually try and force Peanut away. Trick is on his way with Smite. So much damage and the vision coverage here. G2 should be able to take this in time. Perk's looking for him, spots him out. There's no flash, he can't get him the wall. No chance of a steal. Wolf, not in range either. And that is a huge Baron pickup for G2 Esports. And we said earlier, G2 Esports scaling is much better in this game here, especially with the gangplank from Expect. And he's able to get quite some damage off in this fight here. Wolf, without the flash that was forced earlier, gets kicked back in, has Vega in his belly, and Bang is not even in the fight yet. Exactly, they're crucially able to take down Daisy very early as well to get him out. Expect on gangplank. So much damage output, by the way, in this team fight. Kills Baker, flashes in, takes down Bang, chases off the rest of the team. I mean, this guy is an absolute monster. In the last few shots is all they really need at this point. Blow up the barrel for the slow. Guaranteed that Sven lands the living artillery, and that is excitement on the face of the man who knows he is beating the number one team in the world right now. G2 hoping to steal that title away as Drake number four is picked up cleanly. And it will be just barely, I believe, Elder Dragon the next one. Yeah, they've got all the Drakes. Only lost two towers against SKT in this game here. They are looking so strong. GA on Drake is huge, allows them to dive in and actually buy even more time now for Sven, who is extremely fed, like the rage but is completed for him and also the gangplank. And that's the key, right? You have so many damage threats in this G2 lineup now. This is a fed gangplank. He's level 16 now with this uh, ultimate. And Sven on Kogma firing away from the back line. Going for such a high damage build as well. Rage Blade third puts you in an incredible place damage wise. Bot lane 2 2 gonna fall immediately. Here's the Nick uh, knockback for Trick. Gonna trade with Bang. A Guardian Angel is an easy trade to go for. The bot laner's dead. Huge knockup out of Hoonie. Wolf for the front lines as well. Let's see what they can pick up for this one. A 1 for 0. Trick running away. Gets the shield. Stays alive. Make that a 2 for 0. A double for Sven. The damage up. But is there? Oh, the follow for Prick. Looking for the tank and the support roll. Can't quite quill Wolf yet. One more shot. will do it. Can't quite get in range as Sven. The flash follow is slow as they expect to take one down. A rampage for the gameplay. Now getting it all right now. They're in the face of SKT. 30 minutes into this game. And G2, they're dominating. And G2 hoping history can repeat itself. Every best of five is a 3-1. It's a joke to some, but maybe it can happen. G2 Esports about to strike back. About to close down the game. The fourth death for Faker. The ace courtesy of Sven. And the European LCS is G2 have tied up the series. What a game! Everyone says you can't make mistakes against SKT, but when G2 are playing this well, you can't make mistakes against them. The level of play been seen yet from G2 until now. This playoff run, getting into the top four based on a tiebreaker. Expected to lose to Team WE, winning that one three to one anyway. Expected to get smashed by SKT and winning game two here. This is a G2 unlike any other. It's fantastic to watch them at their peak right now. Like it's everything is just clicking for them at the moment. You know, every member is playing well. They trust in Trick again. He's active on the lease and. 
And it all starts so early on in the game, which is Faker getting put in the dumpster because he has no summoners. And then they use that advantage to go into the side lanes as well with Trick and just snowball every single lane. The G2 playing on all cylinders right now. We'll see if they can keep that one going or if SKT can bounce back. But first, let's check with our analysts. A big smile on Deficio's face there <laughs> as they throw it over here. G2 evening up the series 1-1 with another really impressive early game. We heard Mithy say it. They're the best team in, AU, in EU. rather. They feel like they can make SKT struggle. They're doing more than that. They're pushing SKT to their limits. I mean, Perks has just been unreal this tournament. Even in the group stages in their losses, he was dominant against Faker in lane. Now two games in a row, he has been incredible in lane. And and now this time, the whole team was firing, and they, they felt like they finally found an answer to Galio, which was massive as well. And I love that you talk about perks, because the amount of resources SKT now two games in a row have had to put in to try and halve laning phase, to try to bail Faker out of any phase. Because remember, he only got back in game one by going top lane on Cassiopeia, P2, suffering a few deaths, and getting a bit of free time to farm up and close what was another big lead for perks. He had spent a lot of time in the mid lane, Huni used three Galio ultimates mid lane, and only on the third one did they get the kill on a perch, and that ended up costing them most of the turret health in the top lane. So you could see how much pressure perks was demanding. That's usually what we talk about Faker in the mid lane doing to the other team. So we got to see the other end of the coin here, and that's what gave them a lot of that early game lead. But I also, we just had the team composition graphic up there, want to commend them for finding a way to pick scaling, because when the other team... You have that gameplay pick, and when you can get it ahead early, it's great for the late. And we talk about team comps, so remember, this is once again SKT looking to skirmish with their jungler. Normal plan, but when you have the Ivern, they keep going for Ivern Galio skirmishes, and just picking to choose these sort of things. Chasing in seems greedy. And this is actually something really important to highlight. If Pino would have done a different Ivern route, he would have been level 4 there, and it would have been much different, but props to Trick for doing the big plays on Lee Sin. And also, so much credit has to go this game to expect. The Galio for Huni has been so incredible throughout this tournament, and I think that GP was a was a very intelligent pick, and it was played exceptionally well. It's strong in the 1v1, and the scaling that Chat talked about, it can take over late. And let's remember, the two players we are most concerned about through the group stage for G2 were Trick and Expect, and how they might match up against their lane opponents moving into the bracket stage. Both of these guys have stepped, stepped up massively, even on this Lee Sin pick. Again, what we were saying, a lot of people don't have to worry about Trick's Lee Sin. Well, hey, it's working out for him here in game two. And look at that two level advantage in the mid lane for Perks right here. Faker just trying to get that level five CS, which he does do, but that's after the Cinder ultimate had been placed on him. I mean, SKT got solo killed in top, solo killed in mid. I think the draft, G2 got some advantage. So once again, even Young Buck, who we commended, has been doing some great work here as well. So suddenly, for the first time, it feels like there's question marks on SKT in a way that's more than just how big is their wing going to be or what type of style are they going to play next game. They need to start reacting to what questions G2 are posing. Yeah, but now, Isaiah, let's go ahead and take a look at that point in the game where most people would say, uh-oh, this is where SKT grabs control back. Yeah, and this is what all the SKTU games feel like they look like. It's like, oh, Perks is really ahead. Oh, oh, he just got solo killed by Faker. By a oh, God. Level under you know, Faker. Like, well. what, what is happening bot lane? Oh, no, someone's dead here, too. And this is where you think the whole game is going to fall apart. But G2 navigates this dive so incredibly well. Yeah, bend, but don't break. They are not tilted from having their jungler and mid laner dive. They move between the turrets so well. Watch specifically just expect in Zven and the way they space and never allow Huni to find the right taunt, which his team can follow up on. He flashes in to get the taunt where no one can follow up and then expect just beautifully dances under the turret. And the only damage here is Bang, and he was no way going to be able to follow up the flash. Like you say, he tanks turret because he has the W available from Tom Kench to get out. But again, there's no focus from SKT. It's kind of haphazardly throwing everything at G2 and finding nothing. And it's not just the fact that they survived this. They're able to turn this into multiple kills and the Infernal. The objective focus was there for G2, and that was what they really didn't get in game one. They were never able to snowball it into something more. And this play here was another great one from Trick. Yeah, knowing that Faker was walking through Drake, having expect with the presence of mind to combo up with that kick, gave them the third Drake as well, because we thought that was going to be the turning point in the game, but then it swung right back, and G2 continued to play with confidence, which is something that they did not relent on after losing that lead in game one. We've seen it so many times. The first game is close. They lose late in game two, and then game 
lose late in game one, and then the rest of the series feels like it's going in that direction, not this time. Yeah, here they push the pace ahead to this Acer replay here, the 4 for 0 plus the Baron for G2, kind of putting the nail in the coffin here for SKT. And you know, when you have to respect so much from G2, this is, of course, the cannon barrage, and yes, they get the single target disengage, but Trick comes up big. The word was the Lee Sin was working in scripts, certainly not on stage in week one, but on stage in game two. Yeah, it's, it's, it's this what really was the death blow, but again, another skirmish played very well by G2. Individual outplays, individual great plays. I mean, Mithy jumping back over the wall to defend his AD carry, allowing Expect the time to come in and clean up these kills. All right, so Jet. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Poppy. I just want things to take away. I got that one. Is that you can't blind pick together. I think for either team, it feels like the Fiora and now the Gangplanker answers. And what looked like a pick that could kind of strangle the life out of top lane matchups is now a bit under the question mark. All right, so now, Jet, looking ahead to game three, we talked so much about SKT and how you got to go late against them. Well, here we had G2. Yeah. They went late against them with a comp that would be at least comfortable going late, but they're still able to push the pace early. You got to do it so many more times, though. Exactly. No one actually has an answer for how to beat SKT because they win too much. But what you have to do is you have to pick your poison and pick what you are strongest with and just go for that strategy. So you can see SKT still picking for scaling. They had the front line. They still had the Ivern with the Ash for good shielding compositions. But at least when G2 got that early game advantage, which they've now done two games in a row, they did have a way of converting it in the late game. So they have to continue to prioritize those chips. And I just want to go back to you, Azale, because at the beginning of the day, you said you're looking at G2, and they've got to play the best League of Legends that they've played in their entire lives here. Not only do they have to do it, they've done it in one game here. Game two, they played the best League of Legends they've ever played. they got to win. they got to do it two more times in order to get that crown. And I mean, they're playing incredibly well. And, and something I'm going to be looking at is, is Peanut and Hooney. They did not have good games in game two. This is their first you know, major international title that they are chasing. And they have to be able to step up and deal with that pressure. The rest of the team is, is tried and true. But these guys, there may be some question marks. We'll see if they can bounce back in game three. Either way, we've got ourselves a series, and I'm excited. We're stepping away for a quick break. When we return, we've got game three between G2 and SKT. Don't go anywhere. You'd be great. Gonna stay alive so far. Put down to 200 HP. Puts the shield back on. Expect one head away from dead. Gets the shield yet again. Trick back in. Oh! One more kill up to it. First blood in for G2 yet again. Next, the gank is in for Pina. One point oh, of so low. He's been slowed. He was already stunned. And that's gonna be the double kill in for Sven. Oh! 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 leaving the European LCS. He's running away to stay alive. One more shot. Two more will do it. And that's the kill picked up for Sven. G2 Esports about to strike back, about to close down the game. Whoa. The ace courtesy of Sven in the European LCS's G2 Esports have tied up the series. Whoa. 